Hi. Um, I had an idea and I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I got my hair looks crazy because I tied it up just now, but yikes. Okay, anyway. Um, you don't have to watch this video because I don't know how interesting it will be. Just in terms of like, yeah, it's probably gonna be quite long, but I have been wanting to read something that is not for class and something that will make me slow down but something that I haven't read before like something that will make me think and this has been sitting on my shelf since I got here and it's like a Mr. Chia gave this to me and I think I have been thinking a lot about like going home, staying here, how I've been feeling and I feel like this would be meditative, meditative, meditative and I want to do it but <laughs> this is taking too long um, but I feel like if I didn't do it with somebody even if the person was like the internet void because I don't know if you're gonna watch this because I don't know if it'll be interesting to you but um yeah I just feel like it'd be nice to slow down at night and read like a chapter oh my god you just messaged me I don't know what you sent me but, um yeah so I'm gonna read this maybe like one or two chapters every night I want to try and keep myself accountable until we finish it. Yes. So this is Camera Lucida by Roland Bath. And let me see what Mr. Chas said. Mr. Chas said, Dear Catherine, I'd like you to have this book because I believe you will appreciate and love a good read. This is one book that changed my life. Although I had not been a good reader, I still firmly believe we read through stormy days and troubled times like art changing our lives. He said, have a safe flight and farewell, and to be safe. So, I want to do that. Okay. One. One day, quite some time ago, I happened on a photograph of Napoleon's youngest brother, Jerome, taken in 1842. And I realised then, with an amazement I have not been able to lessen since. I am looking at eyes that looked at the Emperor. Sometimes I would mention this amazement, but since no one seemed to share it, nor even to understand it, life consists of these little touches of solitude, I forgot about it. My interest in photography took a more cultural turn. I decided I liked photography in opposition to the cinema, from which I nonetheless failed to separate it. This question grew insistent. I was overcome by an ontological desire. I wanted to learn at all costs what photography was in itself, by what essential feature it was to be distinguished from the community of images. Such a desire really meant that beyond the evidence provided by technology and usage, and despite its tremendous contemporary expansion, I wasn't sure that photography existed, that it had a genius of its own. 2. Who could help me? From the first step, that of classification, we must surely classify, verify by examples, if we want to constitute a corpus. Photography evades us. The various distributions we impose upon it are in fact either empirical, professionals, amateurs, or, or rhetorical, landscapes, objects, portraits, nudes, or else aesthetic, realism, pictorialism in any case external to the object, without relation to its essence, which can only be, if it exists at all, the new of which it has been the advent. For these classifications might very well be applied to other, older forms of representation. We might say that photography is unclassifiable. Then I wondered what the source of this disorder might be. The first thing I found was this. What the photograph reproduces 
to infinity has occurred only once. The photograph mechanically repeats what could never be re repeated existentially. In the photograph, the event is never transcended for the sake of something else. The photograph always leads the corpus I need back to the body I see. It is the absolute particular, the sovereign contingency, mad and somehow stupid, the this, this photograph and not photography. In short, what Lacan calls the touche, the occasion, the encounter, the real, in its indefatigable expression. In order to designate reality, Buddhism says sunya, the void, but better, better still, Tathatha, as Alan Watts has it, the fact of being this, of being thus, of being so. Tat means that in Sanskrit and suggests the gesture of the child pointing his finger at something and saying that, there it is, lo, but says something, nothing else. A photograph cannot be transformed, spoken philosophically. It is wholly bal ballasted by the contingency of which it is the weightless, transparent envelope. Show your photographs to someone. He will immediately show you his. Look, this is my brother. This is me as a child, etc. The photograph is never anything but an antiphon of look. See, here it is. It points a finger at certain vis-a-vis -vis and cannot escape this pure dictic language. This is why, insofar as it is illicit to speak of a photograph, it seemed to me just as improbable to speak of the photograph. A specific photograph, in effect, is never distinguished from its referent, from what it represents, or at least it is not immediately or generally distinguished from its referent, as is the case for every other image, encumbered from the start and because of its status, by the way in which the object is simulated. It is not possible to perceive the photographic signifier. Certain professionals do so, but it requires a secondary action of knowledge or of reflection. By nature, the photograph, for convenience sake, let us accept this universal, which for the moment refers only to the tireless repetition of contingency, has something tautological about it. A pipe. Here is always an intractably a pipe. It is as if the photograph always carries its referent with itself, both affected by the same amorous or funeral immobility at the very heart of the moving world. They are glued together limb by limb, like the condemned man and the corpse in certain tortures, or even like those pairs of fish, sharks, I think, according to Michelet, which navigate in convoy as though united by an external coitus. The photograph belongs to that class of laminated objects whose two leaves cannot be separated without destroying them both, the window pane and the landscape, and why not, good and evil, desire in its object. Dualities we can conceive, but not perceive. I didn't yet know that the stubbornness of the referent in always being there would produce the same essence I was looking for. This fatality, no photograph without something or someone, involves photography in the vast disorder of objects, of all the objects in the world. This moment, oh, why choose, why photograph this object, this moment, rather than some other? Photography is unclassifiable because there is no reason to mark this or that of its occurrences. It aspires, perhaps, to become as crude, as certain, as noble as a sign, which would afford it access to the dignity of a language. But for there to be a sign, there must be a mark. Deprived of the principle of marking, photographs are signs which don't take, which turn, as milk does. Whatever it grants to vision and whatever its matter, a photograph is always invisible. It is not it that we see. In short, the referent adheres, and this singular adherence makes it very difficult to focus on photography. The books which deal with it, much less numerous moreover than for any other art, are victims, victims of this difficulty. Some are technical. In order to see the photographic, photographic signifier, they are obliged to focus at very close range. Others are historical or sociological. In order to observe the total phenomenon of the photograph, these are obliged to focus at a great distance. 
I realised with irritation that none discuss precisely the photographs which interest me, which give me pleasure or emotion. What I did care about, the rules of composition of the photographic landscape, or at the other end, about the photographer's family, right? Each time... Oh, I read that wrong. What did I care about the rules of composition of the photogra phot photographic landscape? Or at the other end, about the photographer's family, right? Each time I would read something about photography, I would think of some pe photograph I loved, and this made me furious. Myself, I saw only the referent, the, the, the desired object, the beloved body, but an inopportunate in voice, the voice of knowledge of science then adjured me in a severe tone. Get back to photography. What you are seeing here and what makes you suffer belongs to the category amateur photographs, dealt with by a team of sociologists, nothing but the trace of a social protocol of integration, intended to reassert the family, etc. Yet I persisted. Another louder voice urged me to dismiss such sociological commentary. Looking at certain photographs, I want it to be a primitive, without culture. So I went on, not daring to re reduce the world's countless photographs any more than to extend several of mine to photography. In short, I found myself at an impasse, and so to speak, scientifically alone and disarmed.